and we're back. Guess where we left off now. Okay. So I think we're going to move this. See what we can see in here. Grab some of these signals. transistor. So that's kind of interesting. That is kind of interesting. It's going to transistor. It's it is a zero. I don't think it's a ground. Continuity. Are you ground? Well, you're not. But you are related to ground somewhere. That one's not round either. Okay. I'm going to buy that for the dollar. Let's get a look at that transistor and see what exactly we're dealing with here. Stick my head in here. Stop lying. And. Oh, there we go. It's got a little 1K resistor. And, uh, so, so there's a transistor in here that's connecting me to this line here. Which is also, I don't think it helps with how the ground can end up. Let's see. It's connecting me here. Oh, to 5 volts! Well, well, well. Hello. So I've got a transistor switch connecting pin 50 to 5 volts, and that transistor switch is currently turned off. But I bet we can turn it on. Or am I seeing. Hang on. Let's can. What is can? Again, we have to look at that uh, code up. Definitely can. Alright, let's go. BST84. And 
BST84 NXP BST84 What are you doing? It sounds like a fet It's an end channel enhancement mold DMOS That's what I thought it was My god, there's actually somebody watching this crap I can't believe it Okay, it's a PST-84, so it's an NMOS, so that will definitely have to be started off. That's got 5 volts on here, and this has 5 volts, so in order to turn this on, you want to pull it low, and then bring 5 volts onto this guy here. So let's see if we can help it with that shot, shall we? Noisy. All right, so let's help it out. Let's help it out by. What am I going to do? Am I going to pull this low and turn on the transistor? I suppose that's one way to do it. Let's get a piece of wire. Turn this transistor on. This could get interesting. Oh yeah, our current just increased a lot when we turn on that transistor, guys. So that would tell me we're waking up our IGBT driver board. Ooh, party time! Now, if I look on pin fifty. And I ground the gate of this bit. Oh yeah, our spy bolts. Okay. Our current drums up to twelve forty milliamps from eleven fifty. So we start taking another hundred milliamps. So that is rather interesting. So that tells me that these two could well be our enable lines. Now, this is kind of the pattern recognition stuff and that we see we have six and six potential signal wires. And these two, 49 and 50, could well be our uh, enables. And I might be full of crap, so let's see if I can put my money where my mouth is and see if any of these transistor drivers wake up. So... Let's grab this one. Go on the emitter here. Again, what I'm just taking to be the gate, I'm not really 100% sure. Let's turn on that transistor again. Oh, yeah, we're alive, Igor. All of a sudden, our uh, transistor driver wakes up. Oh, yeah. That'll do me. I think we've got him. I think pin 50 here is definitely uh, to like that. Now I'm going to see if there's a similar setup for 49. The sense it is, there probably is. Turn this off. How's your, e e your evening going, my one viewer? Hope you're well. Considering I've been live streaming nearly all day and had no viewers, it's really nice to have one viewer. Unless, the horse is the famous Mr. Ed, unless this is actually, these are linked together somehow, so let's investigate that. Worst live stream series in YouTube history. Wait a minute. Help phones on beep, beep, beep. Okay, they're not linked together. Do have a bunch of other transistors up here though. I'm trying to find something that looks like it might be controlling it. Nothing there immediately, obvious. Let me get my little. Oh god, my headset just committed suicide. Let me put this in the right way around. It's always a help. 
Transist wait. That could be something, but no, it's a bit too far away, I think. This is my transistor here. It's controlling this side. Hmm. I think now I might just do solder all wire here. Solder all wire here. See if they uh put some five volts on. If I to have five volts on here I might be able to be able to just do that simply enough. Uh, let me just clip this guy back in here now. Do you have five volts on this? Uh, let's see here. My little resistor. Well, let's turn our power back on. No, interesting. It actually needs the five volts to be supplied. It's a supply five volts that that needs before it will actually do anything. So that's why it's switched through a transistor. That's an interesting little discovery. What are you doing? What are you doing, Motley? What are you doing? Talk to me, Goose. It's a very heavy track, this one. Well, it kind of is in the business. But... There's no duplication of this part. This is a larger transistor than the uh, other one. Other ones. These are a little bigger, these XB ones, but they're looking quite that size again, switching straight into the 5 volt rail. If there is, I'm missing it. Okay. Interesting. I can ground out this transistor permanently. I think that's one thing I'm going to do anyway. So we can have us permanently. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't mean ground it out. I mean basically I think what I'm going to do. Yeah, I think I'll remove the transistor or just bridge across it might be easier. Yeah, I'm just going to put a bridge wire across the transistor. I'm going to give myself uh, 5 volts on that line permanently. And that should then bring up my gate driver. It certainly is bringing it up somewhat, so i got to try and figure out uh, if it needs another signal. You know, if it needs pin 50 and also possibly pin 49 to be brought up. But let's do that anyway. Um, yeah, let's do that. Some solder, a bit of bridge wire going on here. Come on, viewer, talk to me, say something to me. It's getting lonely here. I've been doing this all day and no one wants to talk to me because I'm boring. Either I'm boring or this stuff's boring or just not my day. Come on, I have one person watching me here. This is this is a this is a hundred percent increase in viewership. So I'm I'm very pleased with that. Um let's see here. Sorry now. Yeah. Let's see what else we 
100% increase in viewership should never be sneezed at. I think I'm going to, uh, I'm going to use my robot viewing device for this one because it is rather small. And I should avoid eye strain. Of course, that's another thing. Always avoid eye strain, folks. Always use fluffs as well, not like I'm doing. Good. Yeah, there we go. That's got it tinned. Just some nasty conformal coating on this board. It's not, you know, Tesla goo kind of a situation, but it's uh, still a kind of a nasty gunk on there. So it's, a, it's a thinner layer you know, to what Elon usually secretes onto the, onto the boards. Must be busy doing all the secreting. There we go. One advantage, one disadvantage of this soldering station is it's got a really short lead on it. It's a pain in the neck to be honest. Okay, so that should be that. That transistor should not be breached out. I'll sit him back in there. I think that's working. We got more of a whine coming out of it, I think. So that's good news. Active voltage. All right. Let's see. What have I got? The red one's my ground. Of course it is. So I'll go to emitter with the red. Engage with this one. Minus 6.8 volts. Yes. All right. Am I right or am I wrong? Oh, I'm wrong. Hang on. I'm wrong. I thought it might have been, you know, minus 7 volts turning the thing off. I was getting carried away. I was definitely getting carried away. Let's have a look here, because this one is my actual, uh, okay, this is my actual, yeah, so if I'm on the emitter, assuming this is the emitter, and this is the gate, which is looking like it is, then for some reason that transistor is halfway turned on, which wouldn't be good. Uh, let's go to emitter one, gate one, and that one, that's also not, you know, 7 volts, which is weird. How about up here, gate 1. Okay, so it looks like I have half the IGBT driver turned on. So, under those circumstances, what happens... Okay, so I... Snap this on here real quick. What happens if we pip on here? Get my little five volt friend again. Any change in current, but nothing really substantial that I'd be kind of partying with. No. Hmm. 
Not some changes there. This might be another one that needs a more of a farm 5 volt supply to it. So that we can provide. Here's a question for the internet. Have I got the most unpopular channel on YouTube? That would be an achievement and therefore I'd be happy with that. Ooh, we got a little tingle there. Ooh. Oh, something didn't like that. I just blew myself off, did I? I need to turn off the IGBT driver. Yeah, that's kind of a bad sign. Yeah, that's a bad sign. My IGBT driver just died. Oh, not. Hmm. Yeah, I think I killed it. Did I kill it permanently? This is live TV, folks. Well, do you have the answer? Zero matter. Did I just shake it? Oh, there's my problem. Now I'm back on. Alright, just managed to hit off of it, I think. Yay! Alright, that's good. That's good. We're, we're, we're back. We're back. Now we're a strange seven volts on here. There's inductors are warming up as well. So that's interesting. Alright. Next. Let's put five volts on that then. Yeah, I mean what could possibly go wrong? We're just gonna wedge five volts straight into it. So get rid of the resistor, that's for losers. We just want full on. Yep, that caused my current to increase a little bit. Now that could also be very bad. But let's see here. Seven volts is weird. Okay, let's have a look at these caps here in our little switch mode power supply. I want to see what voltages they have on them. The other thing that we could be seeing is I could be, that 6 volts may not be real, we could be seeing some PWM on there. Ooh, yes, it could be, couldn't we? That could be the ticket. Now, so let me see here if I can get... Oh yeah, okay, there's 15 volts on this capacitor. Okay, I got 15 volts on this cap. I got 15 volts on this cap. Fifteen on this one. So there's fifteen volts on all of those caps. Uh, this one's my comms. What have I got over here on these ones? 13. Okay, these are obviously some smoothers coming off the main. I've got 15 on this one. 13 on that one. So I've no negative voltages by the appearance of it, which is kind of weird, but 
might not be that weird. Let me have a quick look at the gate and just see if there's any kind of drive signal on there just in case what the multimeter is showing me is not kosher. As we know, I have been fooled by those lying multimeters in the past. This keeps jumping out, this plug. I don't have it. Ooh, yeah. We got PWM going on here. That's why it's looked weird. Okay, let me get the camera down here for you guys. I've got... I've got exactly 5 kilohertz, 50% PWM being applied here. Um, it's also... Going from 15 volts to... Uh, zero volts. There is no. Um, wow. Okay. So there is no negative voltage drive. There's no negative voltage drive here. That we got to make a note out of. So that pin 50 is an enable pin of some sort. So more notes. Current sensors. Pin 50. 5 volts enable. I, I think, by the look of it. I have to see how much current is flowing through that. But, we have 5 kilohertz. 50% PWM. Uh, 10 PWM, so 0 to 15 volts. What do you think of that? I think that's interesting. But what I think might even be more interesting is if we clip this on here, back to our gate. Unless something like this is the booster or something, and that's why it's driving, but that would also be kind of strange. Um, I can grab the 5 volts here for a minute, and just do something a bit weird with it. I don't think it's the booster, I think this is one of the outputs. No, it doesn't do anything to it anyway, so I don't know what you think. That's a factor. So, alright, we've got... We've definitely got, I'm going to get my little friend here. I'm going to clip him on there. Oh, crap. There's the guy. There it is. Alright, so yeah, 50% PWM. Let's see how good of a drive it is. Actually, pretty decent. 500. One micro, about two microseconds to turn on. That's pretty good. All right. Now what I want to do and see if any of that PWM is being generated anywhere here, or has it been generated on the logic or on the driver board, and it gets modulated from a signal that comes down here. So what I do is have a look, see. Uh, so that's weird they don't use a negative gate drive. At least not that we've seen yet. I suppose this is all the, this is all the point to them, I know, kind of. Bit of oh, what did I just see here? Hang on. Oh, there it is. There she absolutely blows. I was right about those signals. Okay, hang up, guys. Let me get you on here. That's weird. That's weird and wonderful. Okay, so there's my 5 kilohertz PWM. Uh, let me just ground the probe a second. It's, okay, so what I've got here is I've got a square wave. It's a 5 volt square wave. But it's sitting up on about, what's that, 2 volts per division, about 1.5 uh, 
uh, well, 1.8 volts. It's actually sitting up on it. Huh. And those are my six PWMs. Six PWMs, I think, are coming down this line here now. Okay. Getting juicy. Yeah, there they are. All six of them. Huh. I wonder are they on the other side as well? There is a kind of a signal in some of these pins here, but they're not, uh, that's a very weak signal. Possibly only one of these is being modulated or driven, this one. Mind me texting a little bit during this. Got to be done. Now, this is definitely my nervous live stream over. Yeah, today has been like the death of live streaming. This is live streaming finished on YouTube. Certainly is for me. Okay. Uh, let's see what else we got going on here now. So, so, so. You are one weird little driver board, aren't you? So, this one is driving. I'm going to take a bet that the MG1 isn't. So, we've, we've one, two, three. Oh, no, it's not that simple. Of course, it's two, E2, E2, E1. So, there's... Hmm. Let's try something. Let's a little test here. If I take my scope probe, yeah, I can actually see a little bit of noise coming off these guys. Not so much on those. Can we do that? Yeah, that's a little noise. Kind of pick it up. Oh, okay. We managed to enable the uh, gate drivers, so I'm going to take that as positive. So, from that, we would say that these six here are most definitely, uh, these are most definitely our, probably our MG2 signals, these ones. Now, I won't know that until I get in here and mess about with it. The other problem is trying to find this plug. Uh, this BM50BSHLVSGTFT. <coughs> but hey, we'll get there. Yeah, I need to find that plug and make a breakout board. But the only other way to do it is to try cutting some of those tracks on there. And the problem is, it's most certainly a multi-layer PCB. Um, they drop on to vias very near. Now, I could certainly cut some of them, probably cut a few of them, uh, sufficient that I could inject my own signal in there, which would be probably the next sensible thing to do, or, better still, 
if I could find where they go in some other part of the circuit here. Um, another thing there could be is we could have components on the far side of this PCB. So I think let's pull this off. Get a bit of light. Hang on one second. Just gotta throw a little bit of light in there. Yeah, I think there's I think there's definitely parts on the other side of that card. There is, yeah. Parts on the other side of the card. Now I don't know if they would relate to this, but it would be definitely interesting to see how much we can hack this card off. So to take this out, I believe yeah, I'm gonna have to pull off this guy here. So definitely gonna have to pull this guy off. So, at least we're learning, folks. We've learned quite a bit today. We've learned quite a bit today, that's for sure. So, to get this off, I am going to... What am I going to do? I'm going to uh, unbolt these. Just basically unbolting this stuff, really, isn't it? So, it's, you know, it's nothing else. Nothing else to it. Let me get a bag. Let's have some bags here. Here, I think I'll move this thing down to the case. That one I don't think we need to take out, it's just these four here. I think that's it. Sensors anyway. Well, kind of figured them out at least. Broad stroke, so it shouldn't really matter. Uh, okay, there we go. Just unplug that. Unplug that. Unplug that. Okay. I trust the uh, JST. These are our current sensors. Pop them into this bag. Now, we should be able to take this PCB off here. Let's do that. 
crappy screwdriver twelve. Yep. Crappy screwdriver twelve. Still pretty much held down here. I'm guessing some of those screws that are into this are also going down into that. Into this kind of nylon brackets assembly here. Sound searcher remove. Oh yeah, damn. Okay, this thing is seriously populated on the on the back. All right, so yeah, a bit of an amateur move on my behalf not to uh, not to flip this over before now. Okay, got some really interesting stuff back here, guys. Some really interesting stuff back here. All right. And there's two Tamagawa resolver to digital converters on here anyway. Not that we're going to need those, of course. All right. So, on the back, I have these guys, which are quite interesting. Got these guys. They look a lot like some kind of driver. Let's see what I've got here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Oh, you're right. When you think about it. So, if I woke this up, I wonder would we see some PWM going on these guys here? There's some test points back here as well, which would be quite useful for us. Okay, let's try a little bit of try a little bit of tenderness. Let's move this out of the way. Okay, so. Power supply, ground on the bottom. I think I can take that fly wall bore off here, or else it's just gonna, it's just gonna um, hit something and kill it on me. So let's not do that. Let's turn off some in there. All right, now, so ground on the bottom. There we go, and holes on top. Power on. And my power supplies are whining away merrily. Uh, no sign of. Oh, come on, Scopey, don't be doing that. No sign of uh, anything bad going on. So, I want to find myself a nice ground connection here. I think I've got one. Check and see if those PWMs are still being generated. Are, but I'm not grounding properly. So yay for that. Um, find the ground in 
this time across the ground pins are in there, which I can't go on so I've shot something out. That was stupid. Um, can I get on ground here of some sort? No, there must be something. Don't make me have to solder it on again. Nope. That's not ground. Might easily ground though. Jesus. Okay. We'll do it the hard way. We've got a clip lead here somewhere. There we are. Okay. Now, okay, there's a the ground. Finally. That's weird. Not actually looking like it's being into something, but of course it may not have a voltage to pull down. Oh, you naughty little smegger. Is this what I think it is? Active lows. These could be active low. These drive signals could be active low. Take a resistor. Let's take a resistor here. Uh, that. Yep. Active low. So, isn't that interesting? Gate drives are active low. Are there a uh, pull down? Pull down. Gate drives are pull downs. Little fecker, aren't you? Little fecker, aren't you? A little fecker. So, yeah, you're a fecker. Now, so, <laughs> right, we need this one here for a minute to see if we can figure out the plan here. So, we're going to need to clip him on here because he's five volts. Okay, so if we clip our scope probe on there, now, I don't seem to see. These ones over the far side are the same thing. Oh yeah, these are driving away apparently. So, ain't that interesting. Alright. So they're actually low, the signals are. Now, if I flip over here, what I want to do is see. anything going on around here oh yeah here they are here's my gate signals these little guys here I'm giving them gate signals goes to your view he folks yeah they're there they're there Every single one of them has been driven through these resistors here. Well, your day just out of curiosity. 910, what's that? 91R? I think that's 91R, isn't it? 910. Not that anyone's going to answer me, I suppose.
Let's see if I'm right. Yep, 91 ohms. Oh, look at this. Isn't this funny? Yeah, it's a, it's a dual package transistor. By the look of it. There's a ground in the middle. Uh, there's a D dot P. There's the actual. And these guys here bring the signal in. So it looks like some zero ohm links or some other type of thing here. Or some very small uh, format SMD resistors bringing in the signal. In fact, you guys can't really well, not that you guys plural, I suppose. You, you guy can't really see anything in there, so that's not pretty fair, is it? I've got to get you in a bit nearer. So. These are our gate drives here. Uh, these resistors are the ones that are driving our transistor. Our IGBT drive drivers through these little fellas. Hey, look at me for a while. It's really more interesting than electronics, right? So. These D dot P dot thingies are where we're at. Uh, I'm going to just do a quick resistance check on those little small scale components there. Yay, this is fun. I needed this after the week, I think. It was just unwind with something like this. Might seem crazy, right? Let's unwind by reverse engineering a Prius inverter. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Well, what do you know? There are one case. Hmm. Hmm. There's another value then, I would say, pulling them to ground. I was guessing. Yeah, that's exactly what it's doing. Yeah, there's a 10k pull down. It's a 10k pull down. This is where your signal comes in. And there's a 1k. Yeah. It's a 1k to drive the D dot P dot guy here. So this is how it works. I suppose that ain't bad for us few hours of reverse engineering, is it? Let's have a look at these signals again for a laugh. So there we go. There's one signal there. Signal there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 12, 13, oh yeah, this is the booster. This one's got a different duty cycle, and it's different frequency. These ones are 5 kilohertz. Everything down to here, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, are all 5 kilohertz and 50% duty. But down this last one, 7.45 kilohertz and like about 90% duty on that one and about 10% duty on this one. This is the this is the booster. This is the booster. I'm just gonna put a little mark on that. That's the booster guys. They're running it at 7.45 kilohertz. So there's a little bit of something we didn't know last time. <coughs> That's the booster frequency. These are all pull downs. So, 
if we wanted to uh, take this over for our own nefarious purposes, what we would do um, is we would remove all of these resistors here. So there's 14 of these little resistors. And we could then solder our own wires on here and drive it. Um, you know, drive the each of the gate drivers with our own um, system sufficient that we could actually test if we're doing things. You know, kind of de determine which is the right. Uh, you know, did it determine which transistor does what? But these are definitely the booster, there's no doubt about it. PWM duty and the frequency is entirely different. So there you have it guys. Not bad for a bit of basic reverse engineering today. So we have five KHZ of 50% duty. Well, let's call it 1 to 12. We have 7.45 KHZ uh, on 13 and 14. So that's how this thing works. Got these Tamagawa resolver to digital converters. There's two of them here. Uh, we won't be needing those, I can say. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty freaking good. So now we have a way in uh, that we'd be able to access the drive signals. And from there then we can, you know, work out which signal is which, which pin does what. Once we work out what, you know, which which pin does what, we will be able to uh, start designing a board for this thing. So yeah. Alright, I'm going to leave it there for today. Thank you, my one viewer. Thank you for staying with me.